For those who don't know me, my name is Eric. I'm the best man of uh, Dwight here. And um, today I learned something uh, very new that as part of Ethiopian tradition, when the groom comes to pick up the bride the morning of the wedding, it's not something that's very easy to do. Before he enters the house, he has to make his way through a barrier of the bride's family and close friends who are attempting to prevent him from entering the house. But once he enters the house, he then has to make his way through another barrier of family and friends who are not letting him get to his bride very easily. This custom symbolizes the fact that the groom, Dwight, has to fight for his bride. And as I witnessed this process, I, I couldn't help but see in it the Lord Jesus Christ fighting for his bride, the church. You have been nothing less than a joyous bride, draped in the grace of God. No epic meltdown, so present in the moment, and that's because this time you trusted the best planner for all the details, the Lord. I just want to say thank you for allowing me to stand beside you as your maid of honor on this important day. Since your Dede and Dwight started dating, I've been telling them, man, look, let me be your best man. Right. I knew that I wasn't going to be his best man, but sometimes, you know, you got to shoot for the stars and land in the abundance of the clouds. OK, can I get an amen? Dwight has been such an influence on me over the last couple years. Someone I can really look up to, someone that has um, continuously checked in on me. And I don't think he knows the effect he has in my life. And I've known Yodi just for a little while, but I've seen her and the effect that she has on Dwight. So therefore, Yo D is really who I should be thanking right now. Yo D and Dwight, you guys are amazing. What I want to say first of all to Yo D is that I couldn't imagine my life without you. You have changed my life incredibly just by being who you are, whether you're trying to or not to. You show me it's okay to have courage to live out loud. And you're not someone that I can be afraid of having a friendship with and a sisterhood with that I can bear all, and you have been just everything. Dwight, when, the way you love her, the way you look at her, the way you speak to her, the way you just honor her, your value is all over how you treat her. And we just, when we see you come around, we're like, Dwight and your deep, that is a match made in heaven. Like, God did that all the way. It's surreal to be standing in a place that I've prayed for. Many, many years. You're a good, good father. It's who you Witnessing the faithfulness of God in such a special way. And I praise God that he allowed us to endure the distance so that we can be standing here proclaiming our love and our covenant to one another before God and our loved ones. We no longer have to FaceTime or Google chat and let the church say, Amen. <laughs> It's been such a beautiful journey, not because it was perfect, but because we shared in learning how to love one another by setting the right foundation and planting the right seeds so that beauty could grow and flourish. I've learned that in and of myself, I'm not capable of loving you the way I'm called to love you. It's been only the grace of God and the work of the Holy Spirit in me. And I'd be a fool to think that I can make these vows without that same grace and work of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Dwight, I stand on the grace of God and call upon the Holy Spirit, and I stand before our loved ones to say, I vow. Mm -hmm. I vow to see you. I've heard it said that to be loved and not known is comforting but superficial. And to be known and not loved is our greatest fear. Mm. But to be fully known and truly loved is 
well a lot like being loved by God. While I've come to know the incredible man of God that you are, I know that there's so much more to know and see. I never want to get comfortable knowing you, but I want to continue digging deep, continually asking God to show me who you are. Hallelujah. Your strengths, your fears, your gifts, your purposes. And I want to see you the way that he sees you, to affirm you, to encourage you, to stand up for you, to fully see you as you change and grow and continue maturing. And may I never hold that against you, but may, but may God's grace help me adjust and see you and love you through the seasons. I vow to serve you. As we enter into this great mystery of marriage, I'm grateful that God is revealing to us through his spirit that we are called to serve as Jesus served. And he served first by first and foremost submitting to his father. And I know this world views submission as weakness, but we as believers know that the greatest strength was found in submission when Jesus submitted to his Father's will, and in that we have found eternal life. So as your wife, I vow to serve you by respecting you and honoring you, but most importantly, by submitting to your leadership, Amen. because I trust your submission to the Father. I trust your selfless desire, selfless, Selfless desire. <laughs> Got those two. Got those two. <laughs> I trust your selfless desire to lead in wisdom and not in pride. Mm. I trust your selfless desire to lead me not in your own ways but the Father's ways. I vow to stay. I know there will be days where I don't feel like serving, loving, giving, sharing, but may God help me to never use my feelings as an indicator of this covenant. In this walk, I vow to give you permission to point out areas that need sanctification in me, even when it doesn't feel good to receive it. I vow to humble myself and forgive quickly. <laughs> Jesus really needs that. <laughs> I vow to be faithful regardless of internal feelings or external circumstances. I'm committed to you, and more importantly, your holiness. Today, as we stand here before God and our loved ones, my prayer is that as beautiful as we look today, mm. someday <laughs> we will stand before God in such beauty that it will make these clothes look like wraps. Hallelujah. And it's an honor as your wife. Hallelujah to be a part of that journey and process to getting there. I love you, mm. Dwight. Mm. Not fair to have to follow that. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm still recovering from those words, Pastor, so double whammy. All right. Let's see if I can make it through this chicken scratch here. Yo, Deep, the fact that my Heavenly Father has ordained that I play a role. Words. <laughs> that I play a role in the amazing work he is doing in, through, and with you, his daughter, blows my mind. Even more humbling is that he is calling me to play the role of your husband, protector, friend, encourager, and accents on demand provider. <laughs> I speak these words as a verbal expression before God and these witnesses of my heart's commitment to you. I promise to pursue conformity to the image of our Lord and Savior, our guide and friend, our master and King Jesus Christ. Whether or not I am able to deliver on any and all of the promises and vows that I'm about to make depends solely on this first promise. 
I promise to put you first and before myself because Christ laid down his life for me and for you. I promise to never leave you or forsake you in sickness and health and long money and short money, <laughs> in sadness and in joy. I promise to listen to you, to always seek your input and always elevate your insight. I promise to always be honest with you and speak the truth even when it hurts. I promise to share with you my entire heart, even when it's in pieces. Mm. I promise to always laugh at your jokes, but never admit that you are funny. <laughs> I promise you I will strive to fan into flame the bright light within you and to never cover or extinguish it. I promise to always assume a positive intent rooted and anchored in the love I know you have for me. I have pursued you from one coast to the other, <laughs> from Gchat to FaceTime, <laughs> and from November 2014 to this present day, November 4th, 2017. And I promise to never stop, to never ever stop pursuing you with relentless love just as Christ pursued and pursues us and is drawing us close, I can't even read. <laughs> just as Christ pursued and pursues us, drawing us nearer to himself every day. Yodi, you make me the happiest man alive as you join me in pursuing Christ as my wife. I love you. Your lifer.